OK, so moving on. Uh, last part of the structure and function of the eye, uh, which I mentioned earlier we're going to go more into depth, is the retina. So the retina is, this is the money maker of the eye. This is why I drew the layer in green. Right? This is where the actual conversion of the incoming photon of light happens, and it becomes an electrical signal in the nervous system. So, uh, and there's two different kinds of photoreceptor or retinal cell uh, contained here in the retina. And uh, just outlined them up here. So we have the rods and the cones. And because there's two, this is where we get the, the term uh, duplicity theory of vision. Okay. So just a few differences I wrote up here between rods and cones. Um, rods, there's about 120 million compared to about 6 million cones. And you can kind of see the shape here. We have more of a rod-like structure here, more of a cone-like structure. And so the rods are going to be more concentrated on the periphery of, of the retina here. So anywhere in this area, right here on the outside, whereas the cones are going to be much more centered in the, in the, in the center of the, uh, of the retina. In particular here, the macula luteate, we mentioned that earlier, and um, which has almost all cones. And so this is where you have good, you're going to have the best visual acuity. But then right here at the fovea centralis, you have pretty much air, all cones. And this is where you have uh, the actual best um, visual acuity. And this is where uh, you know, the really cool phenomenon of visual accommodation happens when you look at something really, really bright. Right? Remember we mentioned the ciliary body, uh, the muscles of the cili ciliary body are going to pull on those suspensory ligaments where it's going to adjust the, the lens of the eye so that the image, whether it's, you know, when it's a really bright image, really bright light, it's going to focus right here at the fovea centralis. So really cool. A couple other differences here. So rods are going to be a much, much more photosensitive than cones are. So they're about a thousand times more photosensitive just to the presence of light um, <clears throat> than our cones. Uh, but what we lose there is we we can't detect color, and we can't detect very fine details. That's going to be done with the cones, which have um, very strong color vision, and also uh, you can focus on the, on the very specific details of, a, of an image uh, or an object. And then lastly here, uh, I don't know if you guys like mnemonics. Uh, I use them for the MCAT. Uh, a lot of people do, some people don't. But um, rods are going to function in reduced or raw-duced light, whereas cones are going to be for color vision. Um, and uh, yeah, but other than that, uh, we'll, we'll go over this here in a second, but uh, just differences between rods and cones, again, the duplicity theory of vision, and you're going to get mainly cones here in the center of the retina, and rods in the periphery, uh, which one of the little side note I thought was pretty cool, is if you're actually stargazing, right, in these dimly lit uh, area, you can actually focus on a star better if you look to the side of it. Because when you look to the side of it, you're using the periphery of the retina. And with there, with there being more concentrations of, of rods out here, you can actually focus on that star a little bit better. So cool little fun fact of the day. Uh, questions on that? Rods versus cones? Cool.